the network. I thought we'd uh, move on to something a bit different now because we don't really, we haven't really talked about uh, sync a lot, especially not on this podcast. Um, mm-hmm. I was reading an interesting article written by Chris Edward Thakra from Sync Tank. And uh, she said, you know, Netflix are going to put 17 billion into, you know, into their programs this year, into their, into their movies and the TV series. And it's going to have a, a massive effect on the opportunities for, you know, music to go into TV shows. And the same thing as well when we've got Disney Plus launching, Apple TV Plus has launched as well, and HBO Max. There's a lot, suddenly a lot more opportunities for artists to get their music out there and get some money as well. And I think it's just an interesting time because there's not been this much, you know, opportunity for an extra source of income before. So I think it's just thinking from an indie artist perspective, it really might be worthwhile getting yourself signed up to put things like Music Gateway and stuff to get some sync coverage, you know, paying for someone to pitch you to these TV series and movies because the revenue it looks like it's going to be there. Yeah, man. This is a benefit and just a derivative of this content landscape that we're in. It's not just artists that need more content. It's not just even regular entertainment that needs more content. It's brands in general, mm-hmm. right? The NBA needs more content. NFL, the NL, MLB, the like the soccer leagues, McDonald's, everybody mm-hmm. needs more content to stay top of mind and be included in the attention. And the regular meme guy at home or just like the little kid in fifth grade, they put, might try to put your stuff on something and not pay it. Right. Like, of course, they're going to do it all the time. If anything, the technologies will find it, copyright it because of the things they're coming up with. And that'll be that. But it, but it's, there's no payment that's going to come out of it because that doesn't make sense for the consumer. But Coca-Cola that can get sued, right? McDonald's that can get sued. These bigger companies that still need to create more content, especially understanding that music is an integral part of consuming content so much in so many ways, right? They use it on the commercials and their TV shows and, and, and all these things before. And now that we need to create more and more of it, and there's going to be more people that need sync, right? It's just simple, yeah. simple as that, right? So, and those people who do it that way, again, right, we have more people that are official, you know, carry their, their, their business out in the true, proper legal fashions. That means a lot more opportunities for artists. And there's so many artists that I believe that, well, this already happened. It's not even new, but I think so many more artists will truly understand that hey i could just become a sync artist and make more than a yeah, lot of these other yeah. artists like there, there's there's a lot of bad music i was me and Corey were watching uh tv last night and i was pointing out to him like listen to all these bad songs especially reality tv shows there's a mm-hmm. lot of bad music that plays in the background but it does yeah. the job and it doesn't yeah. even feel that bad in that moment right because that's not the full purpose of it it's not the focus yeah yeah, yeah. if you're a whack rapper you can come up on on sync deals, right? Like you don't have to be commercial level, record label sign um, level to pay to to win off of sync, right? So there's there's so much opportunity. That's I guess I have so many thoughts because I haven't really, as you said, we haven't really went deep into um, sync too much on these videos. But I, of course, this is just it's a positive. All right, that they're investing in more content because that means more opportunity for sync. But I think that's also just indicative of the landscape of today. More content is, means more people need to create more content just to stay, yeah. um, you know, top of mind and compete for attention. And then the more people that need to do it, and the more you force these official brands to do it, that's going to be more opportunity as well. Because of course they have to handle things legally because they have a lot of other assets to um, protect. Because it got me thinking again, like, obviously, it makes, it makes so much sense, but, you know, a lot of artists could actually write particular songs with, you know, with a brand in mind or with a TV series in mind, say, they say, like, the first season of a particular show. Maybe you could write something for the second season that you could try and pitch. I was thinking, obviously, what was the name of the artist you interviewed who, you know, pitched to Spanx? I've forgotten his name. Oh, my gosh. How did I forget his name? Because it's just, literally, I had, it, I had it in my brain. I just forgot because I was going to make the point. Oh, my God. It, it's, uh, 
Make make the point. Make the point. I will say his name. I don't know why his name is not popping up right now. You know, the um, idea that he, you know, he had this idea in mind. He was like, I'm going to write this song about Spanx. I'm going to do all my research into her brand and I'm going to pitch it to her. And it all mm-hmm. just came out from there and it made him a lot a serious amount of money for a big brand. And he just had, he just had the idea. It's like, rather than writing a song, obviously I'm, I'm all for artists, you know, writing songs because they want to write them and whether they want it to be about. But if you could write something with a particular brand or target in mind, could really be so fruitful for you. So he set out just to make this song about Spanx and he got the deal. And yep. you know, there's no reason why you still make your own on your own creative endeavors, make your own projects. But also maybe, you know, once in a while you should sit down and think, right, what would I like to let's write something I can actually particularly target to a particular brand or T V series or anything and just pitch it. You know you never know what's gonna exactly. happen. Exactly. One hundred percent. I guess it's, it's there and I had another artist who saw that interview, mm-hmm. made the talk, talking about that with him, and then they decided to pitch to a big car brand a song that they had about that car brand, yep. and you know it's a more niche car brand or whatever. And I don't, I don't think it went anywhere, and I wasn't even going to advise the artist to, to do it exactly. Well, that was a lot of back end stuff because he needed to own the song, in my opinion. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. But but with that being said, he was it actually engaged, got response from one of the bigger people of the brand, um, some big BP or whatever, which took it and continued to have conversations. So the pitch actually went through, right? He actually got to somebody yeah. with a chance, yeah. the, enough interest where there's, hey, I'm going to present this idea to the team, right? And see what happens. And that just goes to show you. It's so much harder to get an executive's attention in music because they're in that domain of music. But these other people outside of those spaces, they don't experience music being pitched to them all the time, right? In cars, they probably experience people who want car help, right? Those types of things or trying to or trying to get on that way. Like Sarah Blakely probably has all these people who want to get their clothing brands or woman-driven brands, that things that she sees all the time. She doesn't see mm-hmm. as much, even though her husband came from the music industry back in the day right all these people in these different niches like where it seems like you're you're competing in this one space but you'll be surprised how many other places that you're actually refreshing yeah there's a big one i need to mention is we haven't mentioned yet is esports 100 percent need to be putting some yeah yeah but those are going they want to integrate really fast yes you need to but those that's not the same as some of these other industries where it's just almost no music because it's already one integral because it's in the, in the background of a lot of people just playing and two twi- twitch that opportunity well. is, mixer yeah, yeah like well twitch uh, is almost synonymous with esports right yeah but exactly but you know getting on, it, getting on pitching to actual you know influences on twitch playing in the background yeah. of, their shit, of their of their you know videos like it's it's still an underutilized market i've been pitching mm. the artists to do so for for years um i've had a lot of artists that have had success doing it um whenever but i don't think there that'll be as much of a problem in like five years i think because of the gaming culture is so strong and a lot of those kids are going to also rap too they'll like it'll be natural for them to just try to do it in gaming in, in gaming videos that one is just so obvious in in how acting culture drake like the fact that drake did that already people understand you know that how they can benefit from each other so yes definitely do that because it's still underutilized and it's still early just because of the difficulty and people it's not just in front of people's faces mm-hmm. but think outside even, the box as you say yeah but even yeah. more than that yeah go even further outside of the boxes yeah um than that where like that's probably people's third step but think five and six where industries where people wouldn't even think to do anything at all oh, mm-hmm. another example there's a girl I know who did a remix. Well, she had a, has an influencer friend who did a remix to this, this old New Orleans song. And they were able to get essentially a commercial deal um, doing some remixes for like a local car dealer. All right. And yep. that doesn't maybe sound sexy, but there's real money. Right. Like now they're writing car commercials for and then doing remixes to bring that attention on um, that car place attention. Right, driving videos. So that's a real in Atlanta that happens all the time. All right, there's if you turn on the radio, certain channels like one eight hundred four one one pain. Good lord, they they have a new remix probably every two weeks 
uh, and using rap and all that stuff, you know, obviously targeting certain demographics. But there's so many opportunities to make money um, and, you know, sink in different ways that it's, it's, it's crazy. Like if, if making money in music is different than, hey, I want to be this particular artist and go this particular path. The problem is everybody's trying to go down that particular path. Yeah. Be the, the vision of an artist that was sold to them when they were kids through mm-hmm. their favorite artists, right? They wanted to be like those people versus say, saying, I want to make money in music. And there's so many ways to make money. I found his name. <laughs> Matt Work.